Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone Zoz and today another very detailed weather update coming your way. We're going to be talking about some heavy rainfall that's currently plaguing inland Australia with a cut-off low providing inland communities in South Australia and Queensland up to 50 millimetres throughout the course of today. We're also going to be talking about some heavy rainfall up in far north Queensland. We'll continue talking about the record-breaking cold snap for Victoria, South Australia and Tasmania and we'll also touch on some cold fronts that are expected to impact the Perth metro area. All of that plus more coming up in today's weather forecast. If you are brand new to the channel please consider subscribing and also leave a like on the video while you're at it. Your support is greatly appreciated. Starting things off with the Central rain, uh, Central Australia rainfall threat. You can see that they've already got some good clouds streaming in from South Australia um, for into South Australia and into Queensland from the Northern Territory powered by this cutoff low that's currently towards the south of Cooper PD and Minterby in South Australia. And that's already providing some pretty good rainfall uh, totals around South Australia and into Queensland. And if I just take a look at the radar imagery here, you can already start to see some heavy falls here and there and some lightning strikes as well throughout South Central Australia. Outside of Sejuna, kind of the hotspot for this heavy rainfall right now, they're already getting accumulations up towards 15 to 20 millimetres an hour, and that's been pretty consistent over the past 12 hours as well. You can see it in the radar imagery here, these thunderstorms and showers streaming in towards the coastline. It's looking pretty wet down there, and it's going to continue to be pretty wet throughout the course of today, and if this rainfall does keep itself up, we could be talking at um, accumulations up towards 100 millimetres just towards the outside of Sejuna. We're also talking about some pretty heavy accumulations possible through Central Australia, Let's touch on the forecast right now because the rain radar isn't going to cover it. You can see showers and storms. They're going to be isolated in places, but pretty consistent for the most part through South Australia and Queensland. They're stretching through along a trough line here, powered by this cutoff low, which is going to be set up uh, towards the uh, west of Cooper PD and Sejuna over the coming 12 to 24 hours. And we're going to be talking about this pretty consistent rain to showers and thunderstorms moving through South Australia and Queensland and then into the northwestern parts of New South Wales over the um, next day or so into early tomorrow morning, the rainfall will continue into the northern parts of New South Wales and the southern parts of Queensland, giving the agricultural communities and the pastoral communities in this part of Australia some much needed rainfall. Just get rid of the temperature observations, but you can see some good rainfall here. Three hourly accumulations up towards 10 or 15 millimetres. And like I did talk about yesterday, this is soaking rainfall. This is very good rainfall for this part of Australia. It's much needed. And this rainfall, like I said, in the terms of soaking, it's not going to be causing some major flooding in this part of Australia. However, if we do pull the forecast back, you can see over the next 24 hours, there are a couple of spots of actually isolated heavy falls through South Australia and into Queensland. And these are concerning in terms of uh, what they could cause to the road network in this part of Central Australia. If you are travelling through Central Australia, especially in the northeastern corner of South Australia and the southwestern corners of Queensland, just make sure you're taking extra care on the roads. Keep up to date with the main roads authority and the local shire officers and the police because there will be road closures starting from this afternoon and into definitely into tomorrow morning and early next week. We're going to be talking about a wide array of roads closed off in this part of Australia because of how much rainfall is expected. And if you were to take a look at the soil moisture map here, which I think is an absolutely fantastic map to get an idea of how wet these locations are, you can see values are going to be two to three times higher than average, yeah, up towards 30 or 40 millimetres above average. That's a massive jump on the normal values, and that means that there's going to be a lot of water. And when I say a lot, it means it will be like an inland sea, a tropical rainforest in this part of Queensland. 50 to 100 millimetres falling across this part of central uh, Queensland and into the northeastern parts of South Australia on top of the rainfall that they've already had so far this year, which has been a lot. It's been well above average. It's just going to be creating all sorts of messes in terms of road closures and river floodings and whatnot. So just take extra care if you are in Central Australia. That's kind of the main story on this weather event. In terms of peak rainfall accumulations over the next three days, which is when this rainfall event is going to be lasting for, we're talking about up to... 50 millimetres or so for parts of Queensland. The rainfall between Birdsville and Mount Isa is going to be a little bit unpredictable, but as you get further towards the um, east around Windora and uh, into the agricultural and the pastoral communities through here, the rainfall becomes a lot more predictable and it will be between 20 and 30 millimetres for a lot of these locations. So once again, very good rainfall, soaking rainfall that is much needed for this part of Queensland. Speaking of New South Wales, some good rainfall also expected down there um, in the northern parts of New South Wales and even in towards the western parts as well, 
Broken Hill expecting 20 to 25 millimetres. Tibura expecting up towards 50 millimetres. And that rainfall continues into South Australia, where it will be a little bit more unpredictable and hitting this for locations. But still widespread accumulations above 20 millimetres and approaching 50 millimetres. Broxby Downs a healthy 25. Udendata also expecting somewhere between 10 and 25 millimetres too. Moomba expecting a very healthy 20 millimetres or so, which is very good for that location. They're typically one of Australia's driest spots in this part of South Australia on an average basis only expects about 70 or 80 millimetres a year. So we're talking about half a year's worth of rainfall and in pockets up to a year's worth of rainfall coming through in the next 36 hours for this part of South Australia and Queensland. So like I have been saying, stay as safe as you can on the road network and move north or further towards the west if you can out of the way of this rain. Not only is it unpleasant camping or travelling through the rain, especially on gravel roads, it's also quite dangerous in terms of what roads could be closed off and when. Now early next week this storm front is going to move into New South Wales, weaken off very significantly and it's just going to become light rainfall, pesky light rainfall throughout the course of Monday. But still a couple of good drops are expected because of the slow moving nature of this system and the fact that it, there's still a lot of moisture in the air for this system to make the most of. We could be looking at accumulations up towards 20 millimetres, even 30 millimetres in places outside of Tamworth, Dubbo, Orange, Bathurst throughout the course of Monday and into early Tuesday morning. And then what's going to happen is this um, sort of frontal band is going to get itself over the water adjacent to the New South Wales and Queensland coastline. It's going to fire up a bunch of thunderstorms, none of which will be of significant impact to the coast or anything. A couple of showers expected as far north as the Sunshine Coast, including Brisbane and the Gold Coast and Cape Byron, that sort of area. And then this cutoff low is going to power itself up into a full-blown low-pressure system, and it's going to resemble a little bit of an East Coast low, to be honest, providing some rainfall and relief to the intense cold snap that's plaguing Tasmania sometime next Tuesday or Wednesday. It's not going to be too much in terms of rainfall, and then this cold front system is going to weaken off substantially and move into the Tasman Sea. But that's kind of the weather forecast from then onwards. In terms of rainfall for Sydney and other big population centres, it's going to be pretty hit and miss, but I would say no more than 20 millimetres forecast for Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, the rainfall will be in the form of pretty heavy shower fronts that move through. So again, just, just take care on the roads throughout uh, Sydney and it surrounds on Tuesday and Wednesday. It looks like some good rainfall is coming through. And along the entire length of the coastline, there's actually not too much rainfall expected. And north of Tauri, we could be looking at up towards 30 or 35 millimetres there, but that's kind of the wettest location. The majority of New South Wales actually expecting some pretty good rainfall out of this event, at least 20 millimetres or so, just with the exception of agricultural communities in the extreme south um, western corner and the southern corners around Albury as well. They're kind of expecting not too much in the way of rainfall from this weather event. The majority that's staying well offshore outside of Lord Howe Island. You can see here some good rainfall accumulations expected out there. Let's move on to the next part of the video and that is up in far north Queens. I'm going to talk about the weather up there. They've had some heavy rainfall overnight and you can see it here on the radar imagery just streaming in up to the coastline overnight. It's been pretty slow moving and pretty heavy at times as well and that's equated to rainfall accumulations up to 130 millimetres outside of Innisfail and Tully. Bang on the forecast yesterday. The Eastern Relief was exactly on the mark and you can see it is still trailing in so a couple more millimetres expected today. I'd say no more than 20 or 30 millimetres is possible throughout the course of today. The rainfall will be easing off as we get to the later hours of today but still as you can see on the satellite imagery the cloud not going anywhere uh, throughout the next 12 to 24 hours and we've still got that onshore flow which is going to be bringing in the odd shower here and there. Um, you've got to wait kind of the, towards the daytime hours to really see the onshore flow in action but you can see it over the past two hours if we turn this into a two hour loop, you can still see some of this speckly cloud streaming in underneath this high cloud and that's going to be providing those light to moderate showers throughout the course of the next 24 to 48 hours for this location of far north Queensland. Any questions or comments on the rainfall up here? please do leave it in the comments section down below. I look forward to answering as many as I can today. Uh, there is the risk of some minor flooding up in far north Queensland. I don't think the Bureau of Meteorology has issued any uh, flood watches, but I've kept up to date with all the river levels and there are uh, rivers that are rising rapidly at this time and some that are actually getting close to the minor flooding uh, mark. So just stay safe if you do live in a flood prone area throughout this morning and into early hours of this afternoon, there is the chance of some minor flooding in the coastal parts of far north Queensland between Cairns and Innisfail. As you can see here on the satellite map, we've got a pretty strong and very large cold front racing towards the West Australian coastline this morning. It's a powerful system and is it, it is expected to drop some good rainfall totals in some places. All of that plus more coming up in the next couple of minutes. Uh, that does lead us very nicely into uh, the stories covering the West Australian cold front situation. We've got a couple of powerful cold fronts expected to make passage across the Southwest Capes and the coastal regions over the coming uh, five or six days or so. So I'm going to bring the latest information on those right now. You can see already some clouds starting to stream in over the South 
southwest over Perth as well. It's been a little bit of a gloomy start to, to, uh, to today. You still might be able to get a little bit of washing done. There is some good wind gusts around and that certainly is a big factor of this weather front. It's not so much the rainfall, but it's going to be the very strong winds that are brought ashore by this powerful cold front. You can see here the winds uh, gusting up towards 70 or 80 kilometres an hour as this cold front makes its passage towards the Perth coastal parts. Uh, and you can see on the frontal line itself, we're talking about wind gusts up towards 90, 95 kilometres an hour. And I'm surprised that the Bureau of Meteorology has not issued a severe weather warning for this system because you can see here offshore from the southwest cape so talking about gusts up towards 100 kilometers an hour and this is at 6 p.m tonight so it's really close at this time we're talking about some very strong winds as this system makes its crossing the showers are going to be exclusive to the late hours of this afternoon and evening i don't think the rain is going to start until at least 4 or 5 p.m today but they could be heavy at times. You can see here these thunderstorms remaining offshore for the most part, but they do get themselves very close to the coast. And you can see the Southwest Capes being impacted by some heavy falls later on tonight into the very early hours of tomorrow morning. Uh, light to moderate rain expected to continue into Sunday morning and into early Sunday um, afternoon. But by the time the sun has risen, the majority of the rainfall should be well out of the way. A couple of showers here and there around um, the early afternoon hours between 10 a.m. and 1, a, uh, 1 p.m. rather for the Perth metro area and also some showers and storms continuing along the southwest coastal uh, region right through Sunday into early Monday morning. But in terms of rainfall, the majority of it does keep itself further north up towards Geraldton, Calbarry, Northampton, that sort of area. There is some heavy falls expected up there, possibly up towards 25 millimetres outside of Geraldton and um, Calbarry, um, the Ubrolis Islands as well, expecting some good rainfall. So for the travellers up in the northern parts of the state, especially for school holidays, some heavy rainfall is coming in damaging winds as well make sure you are in a safe spot tonight if you are camping get yourself a little bit further inland it'll be a much more pleasant experience as well find somewhere along the Kennedy Ranges or inland towards Gascoigne Junction that'll be a much more pleasant camping experience tonight if you can uh, because this heavy rainfall it won't be penetrating too far inland but if you are right on the coast then it will be a rather unpleasant camping experience it'll be a very soggy night as well especially for places between Geraldton and Carnarvon along the coastline some heavy showers are expected to come in there so in terms of rainfall throughout the course of today and early on and the early hours of tomorrow, we're really not talking about too much. For the Perth metro area, it's only up towards 18 millimetres or so, or about 20 millimetres. It's the highest mark that I'm seeing. But the majority of that is actually going to fall early tomorrow morning from uh, showers behind this cold front, not actually on the initial cold front itself. The rainfall really struggling to penetrate inland. The southern parts of the wheat belt getting absolutely nothing in terms of rainfall. And the central parts of the wheat belt as far inland as even like Beverly and Brookton really struggling to pick up some decent rainfall as well. Only a couple of millimetres expected there and it will be really hit and miss. It's sort of the coast, like I said, between Geraldton and Carnarvon that's expecting the higher accumulations up towards 25 millimetres or so. Carnarvon itself is actually expecting more so towards 30 or 40 millimetres but again that does look rather hit and miss at this time and just considering the shape of the cold front right now it really isn't bringing in much moisture as far north as Carnarvon so we're really going to have to wait and see on what this actually does. In terms of rainfall it's going to be very unpredictable north of Calbarry but there is still a couple of light showers that are pretty much certain between the line of Geraldton to Carnarvon but again they won't be penetrating too far inland. So that's tonight we've also got another cold front coming through sometime Tuesday and into Wednesday. This uh, cold front will be a little bit stronger than the one that we're talking about now with some proper thunderstorms and heavy showers Tuesday night. Um, the evening commute on Tuesday for the Perth metro area could be a little bit hairy. Looks like some good rainfall is going to be streaming ashore then. Some also some pretty good rainfall up towards the north of the state as well, or the northern parts of the wheat belt between Geraldton and Carnarvon. Some more good rainfall is expected up there. Damaging winds expected south of Durian Bay up towards 70 kilometres an hour, gusting to 100 kilometres an hour, especially for those southwest capes, the wind threat is going to be pretty consistent from this afternoon into uh, Tuesday or early Wednesday morning and then those showers behind this cold front streaming in throughout the course of Wednesday. It's going to be a pretty wet and ugly day Wednesday. A very typical winter's day. Those showers hopefully clearing out by the early hours of the afternoon but most likely around the early evening hours for the Perth metro area at least and then continuing for the south coast between Albany and Esperance through Wednesday and into the early hours of Thursday. In terms of rainfall accumulation from this front, we'll have to take a look at the rainfall over the next five days. Some good rainfall is now expected for the, for the Perth metro area, up towards 50, 55, maybe even 60 millimetres for pockets, the southern suburbs, expecting some good rainfall accumulations too. Uh, for the southwest capes, between 40 and 50 millimetres also expected. The south coast expecting between 20 and 40 millimetres too. Inland parts of the wheat belt around Katanning and Mount Barker expecting some good rainfall up towards 30 millimetres, maybe 40 if 
they're lucky, and the rainfall penetrating significantly far inland through the wheat belt as well. Out towards Southern Cross, they're also expecting uh, double-digit rainfalls uh, through Tuesday and Wednesday up towards 15 millimetres of the stuff, and even the goldfields expecting up towards 20 millimetres of rainfall as well. So it looks like a really good uh, amount of rainfall is coming through for the southwest of Western Australia, right down the coast from Geraldton to Perth, expecting some good and heavy rainfall at times, and then inland as well into the wheat belt, expecting some very healthy rainfall accumulations there. So that is just fantastic news. We love to see it on this forecast, which is just great. But the majority of this is going to be coming through Tuesday and into Wednesday, clearing out by Wednesday evening. I don't think there's going to be too much in the way of rainfall tonight. It's just going to be a pretty windy day for the Perth metro area. Those winds will be picking up throughout the course of today, but I don't think there's going to be too much in the way of rainfall, like I have said about a hundred times. Any questions or comments, leave it in the comment section down below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So the last thing that I want to talk about is this cold snap that's been plaguing eastern Australia. Well, it's finally starting to ease. You can see Tasmania just dominated by cloud-free skies and a high-pressure system, and that's what's bringing ashore these very cold, in fact, bitterly cold conditions. Uh, if we take a look at the synoptic chart uh, for today, you can see the high pressure system just starting to pull away from Tasmania at this time. It's going to be weakening significantly throughout the course of today. Uh, you can see completely clearing out of Tasmania by early tomorrow morning, and it looks like tomorrow morning will be a little bit warmer overnight. I mean, still temperatures expected to go significantly far below zero for parts of Tasmania and even into Victoria and uh, New South Wales, but it's really only in the highlands and Lear Wanwe, the nation's coldest spot for this month so far. Looks like it's finally going to have a little bit of reprieve from the bitterly cold conditions that have been plaguing it. I mean, minus 13.5. That is absolutely awful. That is, I'm not sure how they cope down in Tasmania because that is just nothing like Australia would see. That's a little town, not a mountainous community. It's a little town embedded in the mountains receiving uh, near Arctic type weather. That is absolutely awful. And I feel for all of them that have had to endure that so far this month but the good news is from Sunday morning onwards it looks like just a little bit of reprieve is coming through. Uh, Monday morning should be a little bit warmer and Tuesday morning warmer still so that is just some very good news indeed as this high pressure system builds itself up over uh, South Australia. It doesn't look like the cold snap is going to be over there next week especially in the early parts of next week looking pretty cold for parts of South Australia and then another cold snap moving through as this high pressure system builds itself over New South Wales and Victoria. Looks like some cold weather is expected in the early parts and the middle parts of next week. Hopefully things won't get too cold, but you can still see some sub-zero temperatures up around Tamworth and Lightning Ridge. So just a heads up there. Looks like it could be a cold start there. And some cold conditions, of course, for Western Australia in the wake of those powerful cold fronts, but they shouldn't be too icy. I don't think they're going to get significantly further below zero. It was actually a cold start across a lot of Western Australia this morning. A lot of places did go very close to zero. And places that are refusing to go above zero right now or significantly far further above zero. Southern Cross still at two degrees and it's nearly nine o'clock there. But anyways, that is the latest that I have today. Thank you so much for uh, watching the video to this part. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing and also leave a like on the video. If the narration's been a little bit off today, I woke up and I could barely speak, so I've drunk two cups of black tea. Uh, really struggling this morning, actually, to get this video out. The recording's actually 40 minutes long. There's been a lot of cuts, a lot of coughing fits, so I do apologise if one of those accidentally slips its way into the video. Nobody's perfect, least of all me. I do thank you for putting up with the shoddy narration this morning. I do hope tomorrow I will be feeling better for a good and proper narration tomorrow morning. But thank you so much for putting up with me this morning and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.